Hey folks, good morning, good morning, good morning. Uh, this is Simon from Internet Business School. Let me just turn the camera on for two seconds and say hi. There we go. It's a real person. Um, I'm going to turn that off just to save the bandwidth. Um, but welcome to the Saturday School Masterclass. So this is a new idea. Um, what we thought we'd do is do a kind of clue to the title, really, Saturday School. Do some educational content every Saturday. Uh, share with you some teachings. Uh, so this morning, I'm going to do uh, a bit of training around YouTube and probably a little bit of PR as well. Uh, and then I've got a guest speaker, Nick James, that some of you will know, uh, who runs uh, Expert Empires, um, giving um, some training as well in the second session. So we're going to run probably till about midday, be a couple of hours, probably kind of 40 minutes for me, then we'll do a little five, 10 minute break. And then um, we're going to do a second session with Nick. Uh, so what is the Saturday School? Basically, the idea is just give you educational content um, each week, and uh, we're going to just make this recurring. So we're going to keep on going as long as you uh, you keep showing up. So feel free to share the link, tell your friends, share the love, and uh, all the time people uh, are finding benefit in this, we'll we'll keep going with it. So we've got a series of speakers lined up for the next few weeks. Um, so um, yeah, we're going to have people from Internet Business School, so various trainers from Internet Business School doing different content sessions. Uh, there'll be two sessions, most weeks is the plan. Um, so a session starting at 10, then a little break, then another one starting around about 11. Uh, it's gonna be interactive. There'll probably be some other exercises to do. So I've got a couple of exercises for you to do this morning. Uh, there'll be the chance for you to do uh, some Q and A if you've got any questions about the topics that we cover. And the best bit is it's free. Um, so please tell your friends, uh, bring the family and uh, educate yourselves on this whole internet thing. So first topic I want to talk about today is a bit on YouTube marketing. Uh, give me a one in the chat box if you've tried promoting your business on YouTube before. Give me a two if you've never tried before. Let's just get a quick straw poll for how many people have tried, not tried. Okay, it's looking like mostly twos, a couple of ones. Okay, so I'll give you a few insights into how you can use YouTube to drive traffic into your business. You're definitely going to find this of use if you're a two. Um, so this is um, Rick's channel. So many of you know Rick, he's a firefighter uh, that I um, taught to get started with his career guides and uh, I'll continue to mentor Rick over the years and he's got a fantastic YouTube channel that I was chatting to him this week. It's a screenshot he sent in um, towards the end of last year but actually these numbers are now gone up even more. So he's now getting $22,000 per month um, in revenue from YouTube. So this is like the holy grail because we talk about paid traffic but this is getting paid and sent traffic and you can see um, September last year was already up to 2.3 million views in a month. That's now uh, nudging 3 million views per month. So I want you to kind of unpack, how do you get to that point? How does that happen? What's the secret of getting videos on YouTube with crazy amounts of views and also crazy ranking? So in fact, what I'll do is I'll just jump out to YouTube here. I just want to actually show you um, a search that I've done in YouTube this morning. So let me just jump and get in there and then resume the share. There we go. So if you go onto YouTube and you search for interview questions, uh, Rick's channel is called Career Vids. So you'll see here the number one video for the phrase interview questions is one of his. He's had 4 million views just on that one video. But he's not just got one video on there. Look, he's got the number two video as well. Um, and this one was only recorded five months ago. It's already had one million views. If we scroll down a little bit further, he hasn't got the number three, but he has got the number four video. That's had 1.6 million views. Okay. Uh, if we scroll down a little bit more, I think there's a couple more um, further down the page as well. Did I see? There you go. There he is again. So that one's had 19,000 views. This one's had 73,000 views. This one's had 66,000 views. This one's had 37,000 views, 70,000 views, 150. So if you look at that first page results on YouTube, that's pretty spectacular, uh, right? That's almost like a lockout. There's, there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten 
videos on the first page of YouTube for a pretty high searched for phrase like interview question. So how does that happen? Let's unpack that a little bit and talk about how has Rick managed to do that? What are the secret strategies behind getting those kind of stellar results? So there are a number of different kinds of videos. And if you look at um, some of these videos that Rick's done, you'll see there are different kinds of videos that he's created. Uh, most of Rick's are what we call direct to camera videos. So they're actually him and you'll see he's kind of dressed up in a suit um, and he's delivering content, talking to a camera. He might interleave that with some slides as well to make a point, but they're quite personable videos and that definitely works really, really well. People tend to prefer those kind of videos with a real person in than just a, a voiceover of slides, but that's, a, that's an easy option as well. You can just get some slides, make a couple of slides and voice over some slides and many courses, if you think about it, are delivered like that. And some of Rick's videos are like that as well. Um, so a couple of ways there, and you can, these days you can do that really easily. Even a direct to camera one, you can just, you can actually just use your iPhone, right? Your iPhone records in 4K. So you can record a mega high resolution video. All you need to do is just buy a little microphone to plug a, a little lapel microphone into your phone and you'll get a much better quality audio recording. Um, but you can do a direct to camera video just using your phone. You don't need any more expensive tech than that. Or if you've got a, a decent webcam on your computer, you can actually use the webcam built into your computer as well. VoiceOver one is even easier. You just need um, something to make the slides, which could be PowerPoint or Keynote, or these days could also be other tools like Google um, Slides or um, Canva. It's also been used quite a lot now by people to actually make slides. And if you want to kind of have a, a video that, that is more of a, a person message, but you don't feel like you're the person to be in front of the camera, then if you go to Fiverr.com, you can actually find actors that will deliver content for you. So you can pay people literally $5 and they will record your content and, and make a video for you and send the video. So three types of videos there that you can try to create and all easy to do. We're gonna do a little exercise shortly to get you thinking about what sort of videos could you create to promote a business. When you've created the video, uploading is really easy. If you've never done it before, you're just looking for this little arrow that points upwards in the top right hand corner within YouTube. You've probably all got a YouTube account because you watch videos in YouTube, but you've never actually uploaded something. So it's just as simple as clicking on that button, basically, and that will upload your video. Now, when you do upload the video, there is a massive opportunity to affect how that video ranks. And the way that that works is that this is a bit like SEO. I know many of you have done our um, internet marketing courses and you're familiar with the concept of search engine optimization. Well, basically, YouTube works in a similar way. You can optimize your videos on YouTube by getting keywords into the title, the description, and into the keyword tags on the video, much like you would on a web page. You know, on the on web pages, we've been talking about getting keywords into the title of the page and the description of the page, um, and the meta keyword tags, the description tags. This is just the same on YouTube. So, what you want to do is firstly have words in in the title that are phrases that people are actually searching for and you can use the usual keyword research tools to find out what people are searching for but of course the other thing you can do is just type start typing a phrase into google and you get a load of suggestions as to what are the phrases people are looking for in the description uh, don't be lazy don't just put like one sentence in there but write um, a little bit more content write a, a paragraph or two and include within that description keywords that you want uh, to be ranked for. So basically it's SEO again, but also you can have calls to action in there. You can actually have links within the description as well. So some people watch the video and then they click on a link that they've seen in the description box and then come over to your website. So this is a way of directly driving people to your website by including links into your description boxes okay so it's really really powerful and then in the keyword tag section what you can do in there is put lots of phrases that you want your video to be found so think of these as keyword phrases that if somebody typed a phrase containing these words into youtube you would like your video to come up okay so if we look at this example here this is uh one for mechanical comprehension tests so obviously that's in the title it's also in the first sentence of the description and it's also in there 
uh, a couple of times as well. So you've got it in the first sentence, but then you've got mechanical comprehension and tests mentioned again in that second paragraph. Then it's got a context of the kind of jobs that might use that. And then you've got phrases like mechanical comprehension, mechanical reasoning, mechanical comprehension test. You've got all those kind of words into the keyword tags as well. So when you're uploading a video to YouTube, make sure you're setting all of these tags as you go. And also uh, another tip is you can use common spelling mistakes as well. So you can see here we've got comprehension rather than comprehension because people mistype. So some tips for creating content for YouTube. Think of topics that your niche or your audience are going to find useful. And a really good tip and something that Rick's done really well is a lot of the content of his videos is actually little nuggets from his products. His little little nuggets, little lessons from his courses that he sells. And he just thinks of a little topic and gives away a short little video on that topic. And that works really well in two ways. One is it gives people the kind of confidence that this person knows what they're talking about. And if they enjoyed like two or three minutes of content, then they think how much value would I get in a course that was two or three hours long, be long, you know, really worth it to get that. But also it means you've probably already got loads of content on the shelf that you can use. If you've ever created a book or an online course on something, you haven't got to start with a blank sheet of paper. A great way to, to, to do this kind of strategy is just look at the topics that you cover and effectively leak some little nuggets that are already in your course into your YouTube channel and give them away for free. And they don't need to be very long. Many of Rick's videos are short. They're just a couple of minutes long. And one of the things that YouTube also rewards you for is being a regular content creator. So if you are creating content regularly and uploading new videos regularly, that means that all of your videos are more likely to rank more highly because YouTube loves people that are regular content creators. Um, all videos should include a hook at some point. So what you should do is in the video, you should have some sort of call to action to drive people over to a website or to drive them somewhere. So it might be in the video, you mention an extra free resource and you tell them where they can get hold of that free resource. You might be just direct them to the description box and say, if you click on the link in the description box, you're going to find 101 tips on ABC, whatever it might be. Um, or it might be that you send them straight to a website. You might say, if you go to www.simonsamazingtips.com, you're going to get some other thing like that. Okay, but have a call to action within the content of the video. You can also do an overlay. So you can put some text over the top of, you know, if it's a, it's a video of you talking to camera, you can put a video overlay on and have a URL or something actually displayed on the screen, as well as you verbally saying uh, where they need to go. And the content you provide should be some of your best stuff. Don't just give away, you know, tips that people could find anywhere else. Give away some really, really good nuggets. And, and yeah, that just means that people are going to think, well, all the content must be at this um, standard. So they're definitely going to want more. Always ask your viewers to subscribe to your channel. Google's um, or YouTube's algorithm is very much based around engagement. So if people are liking your videos, they're subscribing to your channel and they're commenting, that is seen by YouTube is a really good thing and they want to encourage that. So they put videos higher up the rankings that get likes, that get subscribes and get people making comments. So one way to make that happen more regularly is actually just to ask your audience. So in the content of the video, say to people, you know, if you like this video, please subscribe to get more free training like this. Um, also ask them to hit the like button and also ask them to comment. You know, if you found this video useful, please let me know in the comments box. Say something like that. That'll work really, really well. And don't make your video that you put onto YouTube a sales pitch. The important thing here is to lead with value, lead with content. You can do the selling off of YouTube. The YouTube content should really just be you giving away great value and getting engagement and getting following. And then once you get that engagement and following, then you can sell to them. Uh, through a different channel, either through email or through a telephone call or through a different website, okay? So asking for the comments and also importantly is to reply to the comments as well. So if somebody says, oh, this was amazing, brilliant, thank them um, for their comment. But you could also say something like, thanks for your comment, uh, glad you found it useful. You might also enjoy this video where I cover X, Y, and Z, here's the link, right? Uh, or you might say something like, you know, glad you found the video useful. Please make sure you subscribe to my channel to make sure that you get regular 
uh, training each week for free, something like that. Because then anyone reading the comments, that's just a little prod for them to actually subscribe to your channel as well. Okay. So hopefully uh, that's good. And also another good tip is ask them to tell you what videos they would like you to create next. So ask them to comment on what other topics would they like to see you cover. And if you do that, then that's going to mean you're going to get a steady stream of new ideas for creating future videos so that you're never going to run out of content ideas. So some tips for finding out what are good keywords to put into videos. Firstly, um, there is a auto suggestion part on YouTube. You've already noticed this. It works in the same way as Google. So if you start typing a phrase into YouTube, it auto suggests the most searched for phrases that include those words. So we've typed in police exam here and you can see the most searched for phrases are phrases like police exam 2020, police exam practice test, police exam questions, etc. So Basically, YouTube is telling you these are the phrases. So it'd be a great idea to either make a video with the title of all these different phrases, or at the very least, make a video with a title that includes some of those phrases, but include those other phrases in the description and in the keyword tags of that video, okay? And then use those new keywords to expand your planned title. So instead of your title just being the core keyword like police exam, what we've done here, we've changed it to police exam preparation questions and practice test 2020. And if you look back at the auto suggestion words there, you can see what we've done is we've looked at some of the phrases. So 2020 practice tests, questions, examination, there are words that are commonly searched for together with the word police exam. So what we've done is we've got those words in as well. We've got police exam, preparation, questions, practice, tests, 2020. So we've made a title that includes many of the search for keyword phrases. Another tip is you can also use the auto suggest feature within Google. So note this is different to YouTube. They give you slightly different results. Works in the same way. If you start to type a phrase into Google search, you also get auto suggested the phrases that contain those words that were most searched for on Google search. But what you'll see is the, the results are slightly different to the searches that you see on YouTube. And that's because people tend to look for different things in different places. People uh, will type slightly different phrases into YouTube than they would into Google search. OK, but it'll give you some more ideas for some keyword search phrases that you may want to use. So um, on Google search, for example, we got these phrases. We got how to pass the police exam, police exam, passing score, police exam, study guide, PDF. Uh, so, you know, people aren't likely to search for a phrase including the letters PDF on YouTube because, you know, PDF is a is a text document, right? It's a um, it's a wordy document that you download. That's not the sort of thing you look for on YouTube. So it's not surprising that the YouTube search for phrases in the context of police exam didn't include book or PDF because that's not where you go to find books and PDFs, but Google is where you go. And likewise, people search for police exam passing score. So that's the definitive number, isn't it? They just want to know what is the number? What is the pass mark? So again, people are more likely to search for that on um, Google search than they are on YouTube. But it's important that you use these, these phrases, these keywords in your video as well, because you'll know that Google search very often places a YouTube video on the first page results. So say you created a video and the subject of the video was police exam passing score, and you got those words into the keyword description and into the uh, keyword tags as well. If somebody went to Google search and they typed in police exam passing score, there is a good chance that your YouTube video would appear on the first page of Google because there's probably only one video on YouTube with the title police exam passing score. So very often what Google does is it throws a YouTube video into the mix on a Google results page. Okay. So hopefully you're uh, getting this and you're finding this useful. So similar to before, pick out phrases and keywords, which you can use in your videos and then Create your video descriptions, your video titles based on that. So, for example, here's a description that we've got based on what the searches were on Google. How to pass the police exam with sample questions and answers. Learning the passing score and frequently asked police exam questions. Is the police written exam hard? So we've taken several of those phrases. I've put an arrow next to them um, and merged those into a description. So then our video is going to be a match 
for several different keyword phrases that people might search for on Google search. Okay. So what you're going to end up with is something a little bit like this. So this is the title, this is the description, this is the keyword. So we saw this earlier, so you just kind of recap on what your video information should look like on YouTube. You should have a good title containing keywords that people are searching for. You should use that keyword phrase and more keyword phrases in the description, and you should have plenty of tags of phrases as well. If you do this, then you too could be getting millions of, of views on your videos because that's what Rick's done. Rick has just done this consistently. He's made a little bit of effort. He's researched the keywords. He's tagged his videos up really, really well. And the other thing he's just done is regularly create content. And as I say, YouTube loves content. They want to see people that are content creators. So it's a good habit to try and get into making a video or two a week or even better. You could do it one per day. Remember, it only needs to be a couple of minutes long. So it doesn't need to be really, really long. Um, but you can see the results of this. So uh, we looked at Rick's channel already. Um, but you can see he's got, you know, nailing these searches. He's got so many videos. And this is another student of ours, um, Anthony, who's done videos on negotiation tips and got number one video for the phrase negotiation tips. Uh, just because he's kind of got those words in the same places as well, right? He's got it in the title. He's got it in the description. Um, and, you know, it's a good video. It's had a lot of people liking it, subscribing to the channel. See 70,000 people have... Um, subscribe to that channel off the off the back of those videos. So that's just a couple of examples. But in your industry, what I'd recommend you do is search for the sort of most searchable phrases in your industry, see who's got YouTube channels that are ranking highly, and then start analyzing what are they doing? How regularly are they creating videos? What sort of titles are they using for their videos? What tags have they got on their videos? And um, yeah, you can, you can learn a lot. You know, as an expression I learned years ago in a in a seminar and the speaker said, if you want to be rich, copy a rich bloke. Of course, it could be a rich lady as well. Let's not be sexist. But the point is that if you want to be more successful, you could start with a blank sheet of paper and think, well, how, how, how can I be successful? Or you can look at someone that's already being really successful and just replicate and mirror the kind of strategies that they're using, okay? So let me know if you found that useful or not in the chat box. And what I'd like you to do is just a little couple of minute exercise now. Uh, I'm gonna give you like two or three minutes and I'd like you to brainstorm 10 topics that you could create videos about that relate to your niche, okay? And start thinking about what keywords could you get into the title and description of those videos, okay? So think of your topic. If you haven't got a topic already that you're Get thinking of going into a business or you're in business already, just pick a topic you're interested in and then think, what sort of videos could I create that related to that topic? And a great place to go for inspiration is actually YouTube itself and do a few searches and see what other kind of videos come up in that niche. Um, if you've thinking of writing a book or you've already written a book or a course already, think about the module titles of your book. Um, that can very often give you great ideas. And when you've done that, what I'd like you to do is share in the chat box what your topic is and what ideas you've got for some videos. And I'll do a few shares. I'll comment on whether I think they're good, bad, or indifferent ideas. Um, and if you're struggling, likewise, tell me the topic or niche you're thinking of getting into. And maybe we'll come up with some ideas together as to what could be good ideas for you. Okay, so I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to do that. Let's give you um, three or four minutes to do a little bit of brainstorming. Uh, so remember, comment in the chat box what ideas you've got. And if you're struggling, comment in the chat box as well. And uh, I'll be back to you in a couple of minutes. Okay, folks, how did you get on? Let's have a look in the chat box, see what we've got. Um, so we've got um, lots of uh, different topics here. So let's uh, Let's look at a few of these topics and see what we can come up with in terms of ideas for videos. Okay, so let's pick one of these and just discuss a little bit. We've got lots and lots here. Uh, okay, so Jerry's um, topic is dementia patients. So he's got lots of ideas here, which is great. Diets for dementia patients, exercise for dementia patients, care of dementia patients how to recognize the signs and symptoms of dementia. Brilliant, so they're really good. Good, 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 good. Let's have a look. Um, 
We've got lots and lots here. Let me just scroll down. Okay, Perry. Perry's got a topic, but no video title. So mechanical clocks is Perry's topic. So you could do a, explain a video on what are the different kinds of mechanical clocks? How do they work? Um, how do you wind them? What are the common brands? What are common problems with mechanical clocks when they break? Uh, how accurate are mechanical clocks? Um, those sort of things would all be um, good ideas. How do you service a mechanical clock? There's loads and loads of things you could do with that one, Perry. Um, let's pick another topic here. I'll give you some ideas for another one. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Uh, so Anwar is in the local business marketing space. So think like your um, client, Anwar. Think like the, the person that you're trying to help would be a local business. And they're probably looking to self-serve right they'll probably be using youtube maybe to find the answers to how to market their business online so it might be they might search for a phrase like how do i promote my business on facebook right that might be a phrase that they type for so you could make an explainer video to say this is how a local business should use facebook to promote themselves explain the strategy explain what sort of things you need to do and then offer a free consultation and say something like if you'd like our help on uh, how we can do all this for you please get in touch and we'll give you a free 30 minute consultation um so you know, think of the phrases that a business owner might type they might type in um how do i get my business listed in google's business directory that might be another sort of phrase a local business might type in might be something like how do i collect credit card payments online yeah think of all the different things that you could help with and then imagine you were a business and you were wondering how to do that thing what would you type into google that would be the kind of um phrases that i would think about okay um ba -ba 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 -ba. Let's just see what other topics we've got. Let's pick a couple more. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Okay, we have got... Uh, Jamela has got a dog training idea. So, yeah, that's great. Folks, for dog training, you could basically do all of the, you know, the different manoeuvres. So how to teach your dog to sit, how to teach your dog to stay, how to teach your dog to fetch, how to teach your, teach your dog to lie down. And then all the behaviours that you want to stop. So how to stop your dog jumping up when someone comes to the door. Um, how to toilet train your dog. Um, how to make your dog or stop your dog being aggressive around other dogs. So think of all those things that you might teach. And all of them could lead to a little micro lesson. Uh, but what you want to do is you don't want people to think that, you know, they get in your entire course for free. So you just give one strategy. Like here's one way to you know make a dog lie down and stay for example but actually you know if you enjoyed this you can say in the video we've got another seven ways that we could teach you um come to our you know dog training secrets.com website or whatever and uh i'll give you an idea okay let's pick one more topic sorry we can't go through all of them um but we've got um lots and lots of uh, people on we've got a couple hundred people on so obviously i can't do all of them but hopefully this will just get your uh mind thinking around the right sort of ideas let's just pick another one that'll be a good example um bum, 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 bum. wow lots and lots lots and lots and lots just trying to pick one uh okay let's pick this one so this is uh this is bincy how to get goal focused so if your product is a course is around focus and kind of goal setting what sort of videos could you create on that um obviously you know how to um set your goals might be good so how to kind of has a have a vision board or set your objectives or to set your your goals or your targets it could be a video on that uh, I think a big one around this would be what are the distractions and how do you avoid them? So how to avoid shiny object syndrome, how to take action with discipline and, you know, take steps every single day to move towards your goal. So almost turn it on its head. And this is a good strategy is think about 
what are the problems people encounter and then make the video a solution to the problem. So if someone isn't goal focused, often there's a reason for that. They're not being disciplined about the approach. They're getting distracted by other things. So making videos about the different distractions, about the discipline, about the habits, it could be about time management. So it could be time planning, those sort of things. You know, if you've got a course around being goal focused, it's probably all of the stuff you talk about in your course. It's like, what's the opposite of what you're teaching them to do what's the habits of someone who doesn't do that and then your video is about how do you break that habit of not achieving this and turn it into a positive habit cool fantastic so uh oh brilliant phil's i'm just gonna read phil's one out because he's done uh, a list here which looks good uh so phil has done one on uh building a house so it's uh, so his videos are finding the plot of land getting planning permissions building foundations building walls building floors um materials and labor yeah so that could definitely go um you could you could go deep if you if you look at a, a great place to start would be a schedule of works for a build project so you've kind of got finding the site getting the planning permission but then if you look at a schedule of works what happens in the building product is like you know site preparation foundations piling um the the basic structure basic structure and then you've got um you know the roofing and then you've got internal walls uh plastering plumbing electrics you know if you look at a schedule of works pretty much that would lead you to a great um set of um, videos and just to throw it out there but many of you will know there's a, a government initiative for doing self-build these days and if any of you are thinking of doing a self-build project, the easy thing to do is just be document it as you go, wouldn't it? You could make a great tutorial of documenting everything as you did a self-build house. And I think you'd have a great product on how to build your own self-build house. And I think, uh, if you're not aware of this, the government have got an initiative to um, actually, if you put yourself down on a waiting list, there is a government policy that says the local authority have to find you a self-build building plot within three years if you put your name down on a list, right? So uh, I think there's gonna be a big boom in self-build going forward too. Cool, right, so that was a bit on YouTube to get you started. Uh, next up, I just wanna talk a little bit about PR, then we'll do another exercise, uh, then we'll do uh, a little break, and then we're gonna hand over to uh, Nick for a session as well. <laughs>